Hello students, today you are going to learn the poem television. It's written by Rual Dunn. This is a very lengthy and a lengthy poem. So I'm going to recite the poem and then I will explain also. Now first little bit about the poem. Rual Dunn is one of the most prolific modern writers in English. The poem television is a famous poem where the poet advises and inspires to read books instead of watching the television. This poem warns about the dangers of watching television excessively because TV robs our minds of the power of imagination and creativity. This is the final message that the poet wants to give through this poem. Now the recitation and meaning. Kindly listen to it. The most important thing we have learned so far as children are concerned is never, never let them near our television set. So here the poet says not to allow children to go near television set. <clears throat> or better still just don't install the idiotic thing at all. Or he suggests not, in, not to bring the TV set to home. Not to install this idiotic box at all. In almost every house we have been, we have watched them gapping at the screen. He from his experience says that every household nowadays having TV and he, ha he has seen children are watching TV as if gapping at the screen. They loll and slop and launch about and stare until their eyes pop out. The poet shares his experience. He has watched children gapping at the screen. They were watching with their eyes wide open and with absolute concentration of mind. They were sitting for the long time in front of the TV set. Sometimes they sit or lie, that is launch and lop sit and lie but still they stare at the television until their eyes are too tired he says that from his experience last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor means he went to someone's place and he saw their half, half a dozen children were sitting together and watching tv like spellbound he says that Sitting on floor, they were watching as if they were hypnotized. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it, until they are absolutely drunk with all that shocking, ghastly junk. Children sit and watch, watch and sit, forgetting about everything around them. What they watch on the TV becomes real for the children. As if they were hypnotized by the television, their minds are filled with those shocking, ghastly, junk presentations, which are mostly by mostly inappropriate for them. TV programs kill their valuable time and make them inactive. They stop playing games, doing exercises, they stop playing outdoor games their world is filled with the stories of virtual world as if their minds are drunk that's why here the word drunk is used it is true tv keeps children quiet and just let me read the lines first then yes oh yes we know it keeps them still they don't climb out the window sill they never fight or kick or punch they leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink but did you ever stop to think to wonder just exactly what this do does to your beloved thought yes it is true tv keeps the naughty children calm they watch tv they no more do their mischievous activities like climbing out the windows fighting kicking they allow mother to do her domestic work mother are free mothers are free to do their household work but 
the poet now asked the parents if ever they spent a moment to think what harm this television does to their living child very loving child their loving children are really injured by watching tv constantly the then he asks it trots the sense in the head it kills imagination dead it clogs and clutters up the mind it makes a child so dull and blind he can no longer understand a fantasy and fairy land his brain becomes as soft as cheese his powers of thinking rust and freeze he cannot think he only says to this question he himself answers that this television program makes the child dull the children lose their creative thinking as if they start living in a fairy tale world the child gradually becomes dull his power of imagination completely ruined and he becomes dull he cannot think only he can see and enjoy all right you cry all right you you will say but if we take the set away what shall we do to entertain our darling children please explain the poet now says yes parents now you are going to ask me if we are taking away television sets away from our children then how to entertain them we will answer this by asking you what use the darling ones to do how used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented have you forgotten don't you know we will say it very loud and slow now the poet asks another question to the parents just not giving the answer in the proper way he is throwing his own question and asking the parents readers that how the people when television was not invented how they used to entertain their children and to this question he is now answering they used to read they read and read and read and read and then proceed proceed to read some more great scott gadzooks this great scott and gadzook gadzooks are expressions of surprise now he says that parents how they used to entertain their children in earlier times yes children used to read books only reading he wants to remind what they used to do in the absence of television children used to read lots of books surprisingly people used to spend half of their lifetime by reading books they used to read fantastic stories one half their lives was reading books means half of their time they were reading books the nursery shelves held books galore books clutter up the nursery floor and in the bedroom by the bed more books were waiting to be read such wondrous fine fantastic tales of dragons gypsies queens and wells and treasure isles and distant shores where smugglers rowed with muffled oars and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships and elephants and cannibals crouching round the spot staring away at something hot it smells so good what it what can it be good gracious it's it's vanilla so here na poet is saying they children in earlier times they used to read fantastic stories of dragon gypsies queens wells treasure island distant shores where smugglers rode with muffled oars pirates then elephants cannibals lots of fantastic stories they used to read the younger ones had beatrix potter with mr toad and dirty rotter and squirrel natkin pigling bland and mrs tiggy winkle and just how the camel got his hump and how the monkey lost his rump and mr toad and bless my soul there is mr rat and mr mole oh books what books they used to know those children living long ago 
The younger children used to read stories written by Helen Beatrix Potter, an author of children's books featuring animals with colorful illustrations. He also mentioned stories how the how the camel got his hump and mon monkey lost his rump. Then he used to he mentioned here some of the famous characters from those books, Mr. Toad, then Mr. Rat, Mr. Mole, and uh, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, etc. And this showed his love for those books. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go through your TV set away. So now the poet is pleading to the parents saying to throw away the TV set and in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. Now he suggests to replace TV with a bookshelf full of books then fill the shelves with lots of books ignoring all the dirty looks and screams and yells and bites and kicks the children hitting you with sticks. Now he is saying, yes, ignore all the dirty looks, the shouts, the screams, the hitting, kicking, etc. means the protest when you will be replacing initially the TV sets with bookshelves. Children will, uh, children will react, they will protest, they will scream, they will shout, they, will, they may even hit also but ignore all those things. Fear not because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they will now begin to feel the need of having something to read. And the poet is saying not to fear this situation. Children will protect, protest first but gradually they will understand the real worth and value of reading book. They will finally feel the need to read books and gradually books will become their friends. And once they start, oh boys, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They will grow so keen. They will wonder what they had ever seen in that ridiculous mes machine. Now, when they will develop this habit, they will find the television screen disgusting and unclean. They will discover the real joy of reading books. That no, sit, no sitting, fall and unclean repulsive television screen. When they will develop this habit of reading, they will find this TV screen disgusting, foul, unclean, repulsive, which is creating a vom vomiting like tendency, means they will completely start hating television screen. And later each and every kid will love you more for what you did. Now the poet is telling when they would grow up, they would think and they will realize the power of reading and importance of reading and they will thank their parents for taking the TV set away and developing reading habit in them. The poet ultimately says through this poem that books are the only things that can give real wisdom. So this is the message about the poet Roald Dahl through this poem and I hope you have understood. Now you, you will be reading this poem on your own and in case of any doubt you will text me. I am there to help you. Thank you students.